Hey up folks, so today uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit uh, an auxiliary power socket and Oxford heated grips to my 2019 Kawasaki Z1000 SX Tora. <coughs> so I have here what's uh, sort of colloquially referred to as the cigarette lighter socket. Um, largely they don't fulfil that function anymore but they just serve as a general 12 volt power socket for a, a number of accessories. Um, this one just, just has the standard 12 volt uh, power point. You can buy them with um, uh, USB power points as well. Uh, not expensive, I think this was about £15 and uh, on eBay uh, the listing uh, specifically stated that uh, this was uh, suitable for, uh, for this motorcycle. Uh, I'm also going to fit <coughs> These Oxford heated grips, um, they come in various models for adventure bikes, uh, touring bikes, retro styled. Uh, I fitted these to my Yamaha XJR 1300, the retro ones, and I've been very impressed with them. Um, these are the touring models, so I'm going to fit these uh, and wire them in. Um, what that will require me to do is to remove all of these fairings. Um, now I've done that once already to fit these uh, crash sliders here. Uh, it's quite intimidating at first contemplating what you have to do to get these panels off but if you do it very very methodically um, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, thanks have to go to uh, a YouTube vlogger in the States called Jonathan Long who uh, you can check on YouTube, he's, he's got a, uh, a video there that shows you how to remove all these fairings and uh, I actually followed that step by step, it was very useful indeed. Um, but, so we're going to have to do that again, so it involves removing this panel and uh, this trim panel here and then the whole of this panel here and I'll, I'll show you the different connections that you need to look at. It's basically 4mm Allen bolts um, 6 millimeter Allen bolts and these uh, rivets, um, the plastic pop rivets, they're, they're not difficult to deal with really. So uh, let's crack on. Okay so the first step is to remove this panel here and uh, basically there's a rivet plastic rivet here, a 4mm allen bolt here and then there are one, two, three, four um, prongs that, uh, that push into rubber grommets that are, that are mounted underneath. Uh, so we'll need to pull those away but the first job is to remove these two items here. So for the pop rivet you'll notice there's uh, a small insert in the centre and uh, if you just take your allen key and push that down like so you can actually get uh, your fingernail under there and pull that rivet out and this one's just the standard allen bolt Okay, so we've removed the pop rivet from here and the 4mm allen bolt from here and underneath here are the, the three prongs and the fourth prong there that hold the rest of the panel in place so you just need to gently with your fingers feel for those and, and just give them a, a pull away from the bodywork like so and then the fourth one is uh, down here those are all free now. So now what this panel should do hopefully is to slide forward and 
there we have the panel removed. So what you have underneath here is, um, this is the connection for the left hand indicator which we'll need to disconnect and on the other side of the fairing here is the connection for the um, external temperature sensor so we'll just need to disconnect those okay so these these connections are, are quite stiff so uh, to remove the uh, indicator connection first it might be useful just to carefully use a pair of pliers just to push back this top tab here which will release the connection okay so that's the the indicator behind is the um, air temperature sensor uh, and that's just a, a lift up uh, and pull off that's a uh, uh, very straightforward uh, disconnection there, uh, just a gentle tug and that should come away. Uh, and then of course what we have is we have the uh, female part of the indicator connection is actually sort of press studded in to the panel here and there's two lugs at the back that you can't see but you just really need to compress those best you can, uh, probably using a pair of pliers and that should allow this uh, this brown coloured rivet here uh, to pop out, it's, it's a bit fiddly this, uh, this part. Okay so now we've disconnected the indicator, the air temperature and we've also removed the female part of the indicator connection from its mount on the fairing. Now we just need to remove this panel here and there's just a 4mm bolt there, a uh, 4mm bolt just under the saddle there and then two prongs in the middle which you can feel to pull away. Okay, and that's uh, very straightforward. So now what we need to rem do is to remove this panel here, which is a, a huge piece, it goes right down to the belly pan, this coloured piece here. So basically there's a 4mm bolt there, a 4mm bolt there, a 4mm bolt there, there are two 6mm allen bolts one here underneath and one here just at the sort of four o'clock position then there are two pop rivets on the belly pan um, which you just need a small screwdriver to get under the the little slot there uh, give it a twist that will pop out it's all the one right underneath here and once all those bolts are removed this panel then should just slide away backwards towards the rear of the bike. Okay, so uh, let's pop the bits. Let's pop the screwdriver in. A little twist, you'll see the head come out and then it just pulls pulls away. Uh, there's also one right underneath which you're probably better accessing from the opposite side to the side stand.
Okay, so we have the two um, belly pan rivets removed. Now we can remove the three 4mm Allen bolts. And now the two six mil Allen bolts. Okay. So your fitting should be your two belly pan rivets, the three 4mm Allen bolts and the two 6mm Allen bolts from the bottom. Keep them safe. Now what we should find then is that under here you also have um, another of those prongs that go into the rubber grommets and it's just a matter of giving it a, a gentle, gentle tug to work to pull that away uh, there's also a lot to mention here there's a, a little very straightforward clip that just overhangs the lip of the of the frame there so just pull that away there's no fixings or anything there for that and you should be able to feel the panel pop out of its rubber mounting which is just there and then okay and then under here there are two more of those small pop rivets inside the fairing. One is here and the other if you just run your hand back in a straight line the other one's there and again it's a matter of just pushing the centre in and then popping the rivets out. <clears throat> so for this panel then you need to remember, disconnect the indicator, remove the female part of the indicator connection from the fairing. Inside the fairing, straight pull on the air temperature connector. And then the two prop rivets, front and bottom of the belly pan. The three 4mm Allen bolts, the two 6mm Allen bolts at the bottom and the two pop rivets inside the front fairing by the headlamp there and then just the hook at the back that goes over the frame and then a gentle pull behind here which is where the, the uh, tang goes into the rubber grommets and then you should be able to just pull this whole panel gently away, get it to clear the slider and uh, that's a fairly big old piece of plastic there. Okay, so once you've got all of this exposed, um, the connections for the heated grips are here on this wiring loom the 
female sheathed connection there is the positive and the black male connection is the negative. The connection for the power socket is right up here under the fairing at the front just below where the mirrors are really and again you'll see a white wire with a female sheathed bullet connection on which is the positive and a, a black unsheathed wire with the male negative connection so those are the connections uh, identified um, just while we're here this is these are the sliders that you fit and the reason you need to take all the fairing off is you need to take these two engine bolts out and replace them with the parts that come with the sliders and it's just this assembly here that you can see once that on once that is on you can put all the fairing back and then add this uh, external piece later so the next job is just to remove one more um, four mil allen bolt from here just above this moulding here Okay, so this gives us room to get a small stubby screwdriver in behind and there's just a okay, bit fiddly at last. That's the retaining bracket, so this should just pop out now. Okay, so uh, now we've got uh, all of this clear, we can uh, attach the uh, power point, it's just a retaining ring there, so I'll just remove that retaining ring. Okay, so feed the wires through. Get it so it's uh, now is that threaded? That is threaded, so I just have to bear that in mind when we start turning the wires. Connect the wires at this point, just checking which side the positive is. So I know if that's that way around and this pulls down, which is the way I want it, uh, I know that the positive connection will be the nearest to me. And if I try and screw this in with the wires attached, there's a danger it'll become twisted and perhaps break the connection. So just remove these spare connectors here. And remember that the positive, which is marked, but of course you won't be able to see it when it's behind there, but it's going to be the nearest to you when this cover is in the uh, upright position.
Okay, so anyway, here's a tip. When I first started to try and fit this, I assumed that these ribs were some sort of thread to screw the unit into uh, into this hole here. And uh, that's now on impossible. Um, but the hole was too small for to push it through, so all I've used is a, a round profile file which matches the radius of that hole and just very gently taken off a small amount of material so what I I'm hoping will happen now is we just identify the the positive terminal because we can put these wires back on now because there'll be no no twisting action to get the um, to get the unit into the panel so that's the positive and that's the negative black okay so we can feed that through now and because I've slightly enlarged the hole in this panel hopefully this will uh, pop straight in like so and now we just need to fit this retaining ring, so obviously it needs to thread over the wiring. Up round the back of the unit. Okay, and that's the power socket in. Uh, a bit of a tip here, the, um, the actual thread in the, um, in the body of the, uh, of the socket uh, that takes the uh, retaining ring at the back. Uh, I've just given that because it was really, really stiff and difficult to, uh, to screw it tight. Uh, so I'll just spray a little bit of WD-40 on, on those ribs. Um, and it makes the job a whole lot easier. So the connectors that come with this power socket are completely different to the connectors in the bike. Uh, on the bike, the bullet connectors um, and on the power point it's more like the battery charger connectors that you get so I'm going to have to do a little bit of califudging to join these together right folks so uh, as you can see the actual connectors and you probably can't quite see the connectors up here uh, for the power outlet um, but the connectors here for the heated grips um, on the bike they're actually bullet connectors so the, the positive is the sheathed female connector there and the negative is that um, unsheathed male connector there uh, and it's the same uh, up here uh, for the for the power socket now the power socket that I've got uh, came with a different connector altogether so uh, I'm gonna have to actually fit male and female uh, bullet connectors so here they are uh, 5 amp uh, male and female bullet connectors and so I've stripped the wire here the positive wire obviously with the fuse in and the negative wire and uh, I'll uh, attach the bullet connectors here uh, connect up to the respective male and female connectors on the bike then we'll just pop the ignition on. Uh, I'll plug in my USB uh, adapter in here which has a, a, a telltale light on it which will tell us that there is power uh, to there. Uh, similarly when we come to do the heated grips, the connectors on the Oxford heated grips are battery terminal connectors. Um, 
which are fairly straightforward and uh, the Oxford Grips do have what's called an, an intelligent battery system that monitors uh, if the grips have been left on when the bike's not running so it doesn't flatten your battery but to be honest number one I don't want to actually start disconnecting the battery and have to reset the, the clock and everything uh, and number two um, I think it's better all round that the heated grips are actually wired in to this ignition live system on the bike so obviously these terminals only come live when the ignition is on so there's absolutely no danger of the grips flattening the battery so again I'll remove the uh, the terminal loops the connectors from the heated grips and we'll fit bullet connectors uh, so let's uh, crack on uh, fitting the connectors um, to the power socket right okay so actually in under the fairing of the bike there you can see that the positive connection on the bike is a female bullet connector and the negative connection is a male bullet connector so on the negative wire here from the power socket we need to fit the female bullet connector and onto the positive feed the male bullet connector And uh, here we go. So that's connected up. Here's a standard socket adapter. Uh, this is a micro USB uh, for the form, which I also use as a sat nav in this mount. Um, but as you can see in the back, there's also a USB connector there, so effectively you can charge two things at the same time. But there's a an indicator light here which indicates power and um, that's going to tell me that hopefully everything is connected as it should be once I turn the ignition on the back and there we go you should be able to see blue light there that tells us that's all connected as it should be Okay, so that's that bit done.